video. Now you genuine with love, respect. I truly appreciate your time to the genuine ones. You know, mental health is very important. And I say that respectfully. You know, I see that people are clout chasing behind someone's mental health. And it's so sad to see that at the end of the day, this became the norm. I don't understand how this became the norm. This is so unacceptable. It really is. This is so unacceptable. You're clout chasing behind somebody's name because of their mental health is disgusting. Because you wouldn't want somebody to do that to you. And I say that respectfully. It's just a thought process for me. You know, everybody expresses themselves differently. Either through their drug, of, their drug of choice. Or when they're not aware of themselves. Or when they're under spell work. And I say that respectfully. You know, trauma and pain will put you in a situation where you're reevaluating your thought process at the end of the day, not realizing the impact that you're affecting yourself when you least expect it. So, so somebody to translate the information that someone's expressing themselves is so unhealthy. Especially when someone doesn't have malicious intentions to bring harm towards innocent people. Or bring harm towards themselves. Everybody lashes out differently. It's not an excuse. But what is so important is self-awareness. Self-awareness is very important. But trauma and pain will hold you back from self-awareness. And I say that respectfully. Trauma and pain will hold you back from self-awareness. You know, like, from a child point of view, being sexually assaulted, dealing with violence, dealing with discrimination, dealing with hate crime, dealing with sickness. You put a name to your book. And it went from your childhood into your adulthood. Not having the proper guidance, not having the proper support around you to show you healthy balance, how to overcome your trauma and your pain. Self-medicating yourself in the most unhealthiest way. Realizing the people that you have around you is not for you when you least expect it because all they want to do is kick you down when you're trying to find yourself to have the proper self-awareness. Individuals don't understand the challenges that people have to go through every single day. That's why it's called respect your neighbor and stay in your own lane because you don't understand somebody's walk of life. You may have had an abuser parent in a household. You may not want to express yourself and talk about it. You may have had your days when you had your dysfunctional moments, but you may not display your moments within your moments so somebody can bash you at the end of the day. Everybody is different. And I say that respect because everybody lashes out differently. Everybody expresses themselves differently. But what's unacceptable is how you kick your neighbor down when they're trying to find balance and they're seeking for help. It's the thought process to me. How this became the norm, why the enemy just sits back and watches you become your worst enemy. How you kick your neighbor down is so unhealthy. It really is. It's so unhealthy. Not understanding at the end of the day, you wouldn't want somebody to play in your face when it comes to your trauma and your pain. Not everybody's going to understand you, but it's called respect, neighbor. It's a thought process for me. It doesn't matter if something transpired 20, 40, 50 years ago in somebody's life. And I say that respectfully. The emotional distress that somebody goes through every single day to have to pick themselves up, to try to find balance, to take care of their family, to provide for themselves, to make sure they're good mentally. It's a challenge within a challenge, neighbor. Everybody has their own breaking point and some point in their lives at the end of the day. And I say that respectfully because you never know when someone is going to snap. 
You don't know what somebody's going through mentally. You don't. It's called respect, neighbor. God did not create us to bring ourselves down in this fashion. And I say that respectfully. To kick your neighbor down and allow the enemy to affect your life. To be, you become your worst enemy. God did not create us like that. Not even a little bit. And I say that respectfully. You may not understand where I'm coming from, but that's okay. But it goes to show you at the end of the day that self-awareness is very important. Just because someone speaks up for themselves, someone talks differently, someone expresses themselves differently, they carry themselves differently. You don't know the mental state somebody is going through. They could be well-kept dressed. They could be speaking perfectly fine to you today, tomorrow. It does not matter. You do not know the psychological math that they're going through right now. And for you to try to unbalance them at the end of the day, not realize that you're kicking your neighbor down when they're trying to need, they need a little bit of motivation. It's a thought process for me. You don't have to know somebody to respect somebody. And I say that respectfully. It's the thought process for me. You do not have to know somebody to respect somebody, especially when someone doesn't have malicious intentions to bring harm towards themselves or others around them. Neighbor, it's called respect. Somebody's an addict. Their drug of choice, whatever they prefer. That does not mean kick your neighbor down because today they cannot see for themselves. And they're trying to pick themselves up. They're going in circles with them, going in circles because of their drug of choice. Because of their pain and their trauma that they had to deal with. And they don't want to face their reality. It's hard to cope. They never found the proper balance when it came to trusting somebody to express themselves. It's the thought process for me. Because not everybody is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a safe place. What may a person may express to you, you'll be so surprised how they will let something all out in front of somebody else that they feel so safe with. It's the thought process for me. It's not that somebody's secretive or they're manipulative or whatever the case may be. It's not. It's called balance and finding trust in somebody. And that's the problem with society today, having trust, to trust the innocent person that my neighbor's not going to go against me. I'm coming out of my comfort zone. Why are you trying to kick me down, neighbor, when I'm trying to motivate myself to find myself? You don't understand somebody's walk of life. It's not meant for you to understand somebody's walk of life. And I say that respectfully. It's bigger than culture. It's bigger than religion. It's bigger than someone's sexual orientation. It's bigger than someone's disability. And I say that respectfully, neighbor. It's the thought process for me. How you kick your neighbor down when they're trying to find themselves. Or you're trying to, you're trying to prove a point that you're better than somebody. Or you're trying to prove a point at the end of the day. I'm going to make my neighbor feel unworthy of themselves today. Why would you do such a thing until it's your turn? Why? Why does it have to wait for you to experience something in your life? To go through something traumatic when it comes to trauma and pain. For you to realize that you know what? My situation is not as worse as the next person. It's not supposed to be. Because everybody's walk of life is different. It's called respect, neighbor. Hello? It's called respect. How this internet became the norm of kicking your neighbor down. Instead of somebody saying, you know what? Let me reach out to my neighbor in a message. Hey, neighbor, I'm not here to go against you today. I'm here to uplift you. I don't have malicious intentions. I'm not here to judge you. And I'm not wearing a mask like everybody else who came into your life. That energy hit different. You can't trust people nowadays because of this type of behavior. This type of stuff happens every single day. This is why people have problems getting, having interactions to have conversations with people, be in relationships with people because of trust issues, because of people in their manipulative mind games or people don't have respect for themselves to respect their neighbor. Somebody comes into your life. You don't understand somebody's walk of life. So you sit there and play them close or whatever the case may be just to get information about them. Okay, well, they've been sexually assaulted. They had dysfunctional folks in their family. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. They, they have mental health problems or whatever the case may be because of their family trauma. And all you want to do is go back to the third party conversations and talk down on a person, disrespect the person. All of this type of stuff happens every single day and it's disgusting. It's disgusting. 
It's disgusting. This is not the norm. It's nothing funny about it. It's nothing attractive about it. And it doesn't make you a better person at the end of the day. It doesn't. And a lot of this stuff, it starts from elementary school. And it's disgusting. This bullyingism stuff is disgusting. How you think is the norm to kick your neighbor down when they're supposed to find balance, to have the proper stability, to be able to live in this real world that we actually are in. This dysfunctional world. Everybody's going against each other. Disrespecting each other when they feel like. Not everybody, but majority. You pick and choose because you have a mask on. You may not treat one person one way, but you may treat the next person badly. And don't, 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 don't say you don't. Because it happens. It happens. And you're the type of people that will manipulate someone's character. Just because you treat, treat a group of people fine and respect them, that does not mean you just went behind somebody back and tried to kick them down. Yes, you did, and God saw you because it's Judgment Day. Have you not been paying attention? It's the thought process for me. Somebody's trying to find balance to be able to find the mental stability to show up for themselves, to have the proper self-awareness. Because of their trauma and their pain, they don't have to express to you what's going on with them. But when they start to lash out at the end of the day, they're looking for help. That don't mean try to cough up a dollar over somebody at the end of the day just to feed off their pain. That's not how God works. No, you help your neighbor. It ain't about money. It ain't about clout. Because all attention is not good attention. And I say that respectfully. And these same people that try to seek help, they go to these, these doctors that are, that's, that's supposed to be certified. And they sit in there. Having conversations about their life. And they trying to get something off their chest. It should be no reason why I'm expressing myself to a doctor. And how this doctor is getting so emotionally distressed. Because of me. Because I'm trying to express myself to get the proper help. When they went to school. And I'm doing therapy for you. How does that make sense? The society that we live in, some people do not feel safe going to certain doctors because of the fact that they're going to be manipulated. They're going to feel like, hey, how can I trust you when I feel like you're going to, get, going to go against me? Or let alone, you're not going to understand me. Is my trauma, my pain a little bit too much for you to understand what I'm going through today? Then you sit there and say, how can a person like you go through this? Stuff like this happens every single day. It doesn't matter what household it is. And I say that respectfully. It doesn't matter what household it is when somebody has to deal with an abuser. Someone sexually assaulting children. Somebody beating women. Someone harming children. Someone discriminated against somebody. Someone bringing violence towards the community. Should I continue to keep going? It's the thought process for me. How does this become the norm? How did the enemy psych you out your thought process, let alone your freedom, for so long to allow you to believe it was the norm to kick your neighbor down when they were supposed to find imbalance within their day? Because it's me that I'm speaking. I don't know what I'm talking about, right? I totally understand. But God put me in this position to speak for the right reasons. And I say that respectfully. It's the thought process for me. You don't know what somebody's going through. Regardless if they just lost somebody or not, you don't kick your neighbor down because how you deal with and cope with certain things in your life. Everybody's not built the same way. Not everybody's mentally stable like you. Not everybody's mentally stable like you. But that doesn't mean because you're mentally more stronger at the end of the day. That does not give you the right to kick your neighbor down. It does not give you the right to discriminate against your neighbor. To allow you to feel like it's the norm. It's not the norm. The enemy allows you to become your worst enemy to allow you to go against your neighbor for so long. It's the thought process for me. We're supposed to be protecting the next generation that's supposed to be coming up. To show them what love and respect looks like within a community, within a village. And I say that respectfully. Somebody's having a misunderstanding day. They need to understand that they should be able to express themselves. They should be able to understand that, hey, my neighbor's not going to kick me down because I'm having a misunderstanding self day. I didn't understand what was going on in my household. My father just sexually assaulted me and I can't cope. And I'm in a schoolhouse today. 
around amongst my peers and they don't understand my pain. It's the thought process for me. You see how that works? This happens every single day. It happens every single day. A child being sexually assaulted. A child dealing with discrimination. A child dealing with violence. Dysfunctional folks. You gotta remember, it's a beginning and there's an end. The beginning, it starts from somewhere. Where did it begin? It's the thought process for me. You have certain individuals who have family members that are that are that are, are, are that are are addicts, and they had to fend for themselves. They had to provide for themselves at a young age. Imagine a child coming to the schoolhouse, knowing at the end of the day they didn't eat for a whole two weeks, and the only time they eat is when they're in that schoolhouse. Everybody's laughing at that child because they eating the school lunch. They laughing at the child because the way the child's dressed. Because there's nobody in the household to make sure that child is okay. There's no adult there. The child is the adult. You got to be mindful when you kick somebody down because somebody's trauma and their pain, they wore a mask for so long. They don't know how to cope. It went from their childhood into, into their adulthood. Or you even have children who are separated from their families at a young age, had to grow up fast to a system that didn't care, to show them respect or love, but went against them so they could go against their neighbor. And their neighbor allowed them to feel like that was the norm. So certain individuals will think it was the norm because they didn't have the proper guidance. This is so unacceptable. It really is. Like I said, it starts somewhere. It does. It starts somewhere. As to where a person is today. It doesn't matter how old that person is. That inner child within them is heartbroken. It's called respect. Neighbor. Everybody's walk of life is different. Everybody's walk of life is different. It is. You have people that de dealt with racism for, for, for so long. Discrimination for so, so long. It became the norm of the norm and it's not the norm. It's not. We're supposed to be able to live in an environment to respect each other, regardless of somebody's culture or not at the end of the day, somebody's sexual orientation or not, especially when they don't have malicious intentions to bring harm towards themselves or others around them, neighbor. It's called respect. How may you may cope with life. The next person may not cope with life the same way, but that does not mean kick your neighbor down because they don't understand themselves today. They're just trying to find balance. This is so unhealthy. This is. And I don't understand how this became the norm for so, so long. This is unacceptable. This is so unacceptable. Unacceptable. Allowing violence to be the norm. It's not the norm. Ain't nobody bring a harm towards you. Why you want to sex about their freedom? Because they jealous of you, you jealous of them, or whatever the case may be, all this jealousy stuff. Come on, are you serious? Is it really worth it? That you got to, you, the, the, the karma that you dish out, that you have to reap what you sow now. Judgment Day's been here. Have you not been paying attention? And God is not too pleased. And I say that respectfully. God is not too pleased. No. Kicking your neighbor down. 
Because you may have had an addict family member in your household, but you cope with things differently. So they need to get it together. Everybody's on different pages at the end of the day when it comes to life. You may have had two family, two, 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 fam two family members in your household or the whole house was, was addicts. You know the challenges that a child has to face to deal with addicts at a young age when they're dysfunctional? Because there are some addicts that are, that are very functional, but some, at some point in time, they see trauma within the household too when it comes to abuse, when it comes to disrespect, and disrespect became the norm when that was never the norm. Imagine a child have to grow up so fast. That child is supposed to be a child. But a child has to grow up so fast. And as that child is growing up so fast, right? That child still lacks certain areas of their lives when they become an adult. A lot of them don't know how to clean. A lot of them are very dysfunctional. A lot of them don't know what it means to be in a relationship. A lot of them don't know. It's, it, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. But I'm not here to kick my neighbor down. I'm just speaking facts. This is the type of stuff that when you go to see your therapist, they don't say that. I'm just sitting there talking to somebody, expressing myself. And they just sitting there with the pad, the pen and the pad, just talking. So how did you feel that day? I'm expressing myself. I could talk to anybody about my problems all day long. Like water coming out. Just expressing myself all day long. But just to sit there and I, I honestly understand at the end of the day, this person doesn't understand where I'm coming from. How could you actually sit there and, 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 and acknowledge somebody who just dealt with being sexually assaulted as a child and tell them that everything's going to be okay? Or an adult that just been sexually assaulted and someone went against their free will, regardless at the end of the day how old they are. If someone went against their free will and you mean to tell me that everything's going to be okay, you can't tell somebody's going to be okay. No, you cannot. You cannot just tell somebody's going to be okay. You can't just write off on a slip, okay, well, I just did service with you today. And they just paid for the service and that's it. I didn't get nothing behind it. You sitting there crying while I'm expressing my soap to you. Come on, this is not a soap opera. I did not turn on the TV and ask me to watch me at the end of the day. This is supposed to be therapy. This is what you're here for. You got paid to do this. And you shortchanging me because I'm I, I don't feel I don't feel like I got the proper resources at the end of the day when it came to expressing myself. All I did was express myself. But I still feel I still feel hurt within. You're not giving me the proper tools that I need to move forward for my life. How do I move forward, doctor? How? How do I move forward? They looking at me while I look at them at the end of the day. They unsure. Just be, just, 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 you gonna be okay. What? You got some individuals who deal with abandonment issues. And what happens when they deal with abandonment issues, they tend to psych themselves out their freedom. From a child point of view, going into their adulthood, this type of stuff gets overlooked for so, so long. And because it got overlooked for so, so long, right? You could be around a lot of people all day long. And you could still feel abandoned. You could be around the loved one, your loved ones all day long with a mask on all day. But just sitting there, saying to yourself is, I want to psych myself on my freedom. Nobody gets me. Nobody understands me. Whatever it is you're going through. Like, for real? This is what happens every single day. The crime rates is disgusting. The suicide is, is disgusting. These numbers is, is, is too high. It should be no reason why. No reason at all. No reason. It's 
so dysfunctional within the communities and, the, and within the villages at the end of the day. Like, why? Why is it the norm to go against your neighbor? I know why. To the person in the back that's watching me, watch me. This is what you wanted. This is exactly what you wanted. The enemy does not live here today. And I say that respectfully. The enemy does not live here today. It's a thought process for me. Allow people to not be aware of themselves. To make them so dysfunctional. So they won't be able to show up for themselves. This is what you wanted. This is exactly what you wanted. But it's not the norm. It's not. This is not the norm. I don't know if you haven't been paying attention, but Judgment Day's here. Judgment Day's been here. Moving along. Everybody deserves to be at peace with themselves. And I say that respectfully, to find peace within themselves. Regardless of what background you're from when it comes to your walk of life. And I say that respectfully. Everybody deserves a fair chance at life. But kicking your neighbor down, mm -mm, that's not part of the plan. It's not. It's not part of the plan. And when it comes to healing, it will never be an overnight process. So stop trying to psych yourself out your thought process at the end of the day and think it's going to be an overnight process because it will never be an overnight process when it comes to trauma and pain. And I say that respectfully. It will never be an overnight process process. So never allow someone to psych you out your thought process and allow you to believe it's the norm of the norm that it will be an overnight process when it comes to trauma and pain. No dollar in this world would be able to identify at the end of the day. When it comes to your trauma and pain, it would never be an overnight process. That's like going to the doctor, right? You go in to see a therapist. You mean to tell me in that one session, your whole life is over? You're like Your whole life just changed, right? Your whole life just changed. Your whole life just changed. So that means you ain't got to go back ever again. That was just that one session, right? I'm waiting. It's the thought process for me. Because it would never be an overnight process. And be mindful of the doctors that you say you're going to at the end of the day. It's the thought process for me. Because everybody doesn't have good intentions when it comes to you. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. On God's timing, when it comes to a child of God, and I say this respectfully, ain't got nothing to do about money. Ain't no dollar in this world. And I say this respectfully. Ain't no dollar in this world that God would say at the end of the day, I, I said for that to happen like that. No. To psych you out your thought process? For real? So you mean to tell me you're going to go see these therapists, right? And you sitting there expressing yourself. And God is tapping you in the shoulder like, get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. They ain't got good. They don't got your good. In, they don't got your good interest. They know they don't. You had to leave out of there because they made you feel uncomfortable. You had to leave out of there because you wasn't able to express yourself properly. You had to leave out of there because they didn't understand you. You had to leave out of there because they judged you. This type of stuff happens every single day. All money ain't good money. It's not. No matter how much money you got at the end of the day, all money ain't good money. It's a thought process for me. Because when you're dealing with a child of God, you don't just deal with them any kind of way. Especially not with disrespect. And I say that respectfully. But says to say this. Stop the violence. Be mindful how you treat your neighbor. 
All attention is not good attention. All clout ain't good clout. And I say that respectfully. You clout chasing behind somebody's name at the end of the day. Did you even see if your name was okay? Making a joke out of it. What's so funny? What's funny? Like, what is so funny about kicking your neighbor down or seeing your neighbor hurt? It's the thought process to me. Why would you want to see somebody hurt? I, didn't, I, I never understood that. Like, that, it, it, just, it, just, it just never made sense to me. Because, you know, a lot of this trauma behavior, it starts in elementary school. It does. Bullyism starts in elementary school. That's the first introduction is bullyism in elementary school. If it's not elementary school, it's in the household. And if it's not in the household, somebody's seen somebody doing it. And I say that respectfully. Because somebody can come from a well-kept household, right? Two parents or one family. Home. No disrespect is in the household. They're not disrespecting each other. They're not doing anything out of the ordinary in the household, right? But as soon as that person gets to that schoolhouse, this person became the bully. How? How did you become the bully? How did you become the lead? How did you become the follower or the leader? How did that happen? How? It's a beginning and it's an ending. It's the thought process to me. I don't think individuals understand that Judgment Day's been here. And I don't think anybody's really paying attention. Mm -mm, they not. They not. And this is so unhealthy. Stop the violence. Stop it. Against innocent people. You know, from what I was told, right? When you mind your business, right? You mind your business. You at home, you mind your business. Somebody comes into your home, God forbid, right? God forbid. That's what we're going to say, God forbid. And tries to invade your home, right? Tries to invade your home. That's when you use self-defense, right? You don't use self-defense on an innocent person that's not projecting negative energy towards you or your family. So it should be no reason why anybody's shooting air. It should be no reason why innocent people should be getting hurt in the process of because of the fact that you don't have self-control. All along this. It should be no reason why. It don't matter what environment it is. Regardless of somebody's pissing you off or not, it should be no reason why you're throwing glass bottles out of a window. Shitty pampers out of a window. Ma'am, sir, syringes out of a window where you reside at and where you live at. Let's talk about it. Because at the end of the day, if something hit an innocent person, the person that you were supposed to, you was aiming for, and it hit somebody else, that's a problem within itself. It's the thought process mean how they allow y'all to believe this is the norm of the norm, regardless to your sexual orientation, your disability, your culture, your religion. Like a lot of this stuff is not the norm at all. When it comes to hygiene, when it comes to respect, when it comes to mental health, a lot of this stuff is not the norm. The way y'all are moving out here, it's not. It is not the norm. You sneak this in your neighbor because you don't understand their walk of life. They, you think they think they better than somebody. So you want to kick your neighbor down. And you don't know their walk of life. Now one time did your neighbor project negative energy towards you. But you're projecting negative energy towards an innocent person. Like make it make sense. No for real. Make it make sense. The mathing ain't mathing. It's not. It's not, yet, it's not adding up. It really isn't. And this is. God did not create us like this. Mm-mm. Not even a little bit. No. You don't even understand how beautiful life is supposed to be right now. Life is supposed to be beautiful right now. But the enemy slights you out the thought process allow you to become your worst enemy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not all, but majority, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ma ma majority. Mm-hmm. Out here lining people up 
Don't matter if you're a man or a female, regardless of your sexual orientation. Sitting there playing somebody close. Trying to rob them. Bring harm towards their family. Like, why? Why? You see somebody get a little bit of change. At the end of the day. Hang your pockets? Why are you worried about it for? Why are you worried about somebody else's pockets for? Like, make it make sense. Like, it, 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 like it, just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It don't. But people don't understand that Judgment Day is here. Mm -hmm. And it's been here for a minute now. It's been here for a while. Mm -hmm. And God is not too pleased. Mm -mm. God is not too pleased. Not even a little bit. Mm -mm. It's a thought process for me. You know, self-awareness is very important without wearing a mask. Self-awareness is important without wearing a mask. And I say that respectfully. You know these tools that go out and store within us? Self-awareness, self-respect, self-peace, self-control, self-discipline, self-confidence, self-care, self-value, self-love, self-worth, self-patience, healthy boundaries, healthy balance. So you can understand your trauma and your pain. So you won't shortchange yourself to allow yourself to become victim. So you won't allow yourself to become victim and shortchange yourself when it comes to your future. So you'll be able to choose your best self vision of yourself in the most healthiest way. And I say that respectfully.